Tonight on Rodney Spitz B.I., a missing persons case puts Rodney deep undercover in a nefarious cult. And now he'll have to use all his crime-fighting savvy to avoid cult warfare, escape from certain doom, and claim his per diem. If he can wake up, that is. Take it away, gang. When I finally reached the cockpit, I threw the door open to find that the runaway bullet train was being helmed by the same bloodthirsty mongoose that had put a price on Castro's head. You know they're in the same family as the Mink Otter? They're just better train engineers. And ferrets are just domesticated polecats. Wow, another classic Bricker weekend. What is a polecat anyways? It's a wild ferret. Ooh, so if I see a ferret in a house, it's a ferret. But if I see a ferret outside, it's a... It's a polecat. But what happens if an outside polecat wanders inside? Uninvited. You know what I say, once a polecat, Always a bull cat. But seriously, if anyone asks, we spent the weekend in the Catskills. Oh, what a weekend! We fished, we rafted, we saw eagles, beavers, and a sour old catfish that was eyeballing our wicked raft and the patches on our jackets. You realize we didn't actually spend the weekend in the Catskills, right? I've got a shoebox full of pictures! By week's end, I reckon I'll have a scrapbook. That's the spirit, Rodney. And how about you, Reno? What did our resident office man tracker do to pass a holiday weekend? Track some game? Ooh, I doubt it. Friday night, I drove home to Lexington, Kentucky. Moonshine all the way down. Moonshine all the way back. Hell, I'm moonshining right now. Smoking a pipe. We had a hee-haw, a hoo-ha, a jamboree, and a good old-fashioned BBQ. Back to 14-point buck. Sweet Mississippi goddamn! Aye, and what a weekend it was. We was come back from the Isle of Tinia the Lady with a package of men no one no good. I was driving with a good old boy, Pete Cutters. Engine man. Not fried chicken. God rest him. So Pete and I pull over, gonna get some sleep. I'll never forget as long as ago, Frank's Motel. I've locked Texas. Pete's walking up to unlock the room and I call back. Ask him if he wants an ice cold fresca from the lobby. And Pete turns and trips on a signpost, hurts his back. I tell him, Pete, leave the package, I'll show you around. We'll get the weekend going. Package will still be there when we get back. Up early, gone in the morning. Well, Pete's back is hurting him something fierce. And I remember I got this girl last time I come through in 72, Matilda the Masseuse. I tell Pete, see he's a Philadelphia boy, weak in the pelvis like he's been taken with the polio. Matilda fix that, I told him. She was such a bones right. I should have known the boy was too weak. I should have known better. I thought a hard knuckled woman like Matilda could rub that boy into a man. But that day, that beast of a woman took that boy apart, piece by piece. No mercy, no forgiveness. Aye, and what a weekend it was. Two men going to the massage parlor, one man come out. Masseuse took the rest, June 25th, 1975. And who are you? Most call me Squint. Right, Squint. But what are you doing at our water cooler? I'm telling you about my weekend, friend. But how exactly did you get here? I took the D train. I live on the north side of town. Not far, by the way, the crow flies. Why, you're looking at your new lead maintenance coordinator, Chief. Oh, yeah, I got it. New janitor. Maintenance man, Chief. Property management, fortification, expansion. Now let's not get off on the wrong foot. Say things we can't take back. So in the story, did you deliver the package? Oh, I delivered the package, Chief. For Pete. Wow, that's a real swell story. Well, then you may also find it interesting that I'm a licensed Zeppelin pilot. Unlicensed calligrapher. 
and an enthusiastic amateur mathematician. Nine plus two is nine, Chief. Now I know I may not be a fancy private detective like you are. Um, did you say private detective? Why, indeed I did. You're standing in the office of one Rodney Spitz P.I. Boy, I've only just met the man. And to be honest with you... Well, he'll take it from here, then. Kind, kind words. Yeah, I'll take it from here, everyone. Close the door on your way out, fellas. So what brings a dame like you in to see a pie like me? P.I., damn it. It's my brother, Rico. Ah, brothers. Like in Homeward Bound Part 2. The Desolation of Smog. Uh, no. My biological brother, Rico. He's missing. How long? He's been gone a whole week. Half fortnight. Gotcha. The police won't do anything. It's complicated. What I'm trying to say is I think I know where he is. Fantastic! Why don't you tell me where he is? I'll go get him. We can deal with my expenses, and we can all get on with the healing process. <sighs> it's not that easy. I think Rico's joined a cult. A good one? Or a bad one? Well, they call themselves the Order of Todd. Who's Todd? Todd's their god. I'll take the case. Something tells me this Todd god's a fraud. And if that literature I've been reading on the bus has taught me anything, it's that the only way to infiltrate a cult is through dreams. I've got to build a maze in my dreams, a syrupy web to lure this cult into. Now I'm warning you, this web, this maze, oh, it might have layers like an onion or a leek. I can't just grab your brother and shake him straight. I'm going to have to rehabilitate him. Implant the real world back into his dreams using hypnosis, suggestion, erotic kabuki dances, and opium. All the while, we'll be fast asleep suspended over a bathtub full of ice water in a flop house in Mombasa. Please, just find my brother. He's got a stutter and an eye patch. I wish I had a picture, but it would be wasted on the audience. Oh, I know. My Kermit the Frog face tattoo hasn't gotten a single laugh. Beautiful country out here. Beautiful country. Tree-lined dirt roads, wide open spaces, farms, compounds. Could use some better signage though. How's a fellow supposed to dream his way into a cult if he can't even find it? I wonder if this is the place. Who goes there? Well, I'd like to join a cult, please. Welcome to the Order of Claude. Here you'll find the answers you seek about Claude and Claude-related matters. Yikes, I'm at the wrong cult. I'll have to improvise. Cuss, I'm at the wrong cult. Hey, where can I find the Order of Todd? Oh, Todd is across the road. Wait, before you go, why don't you give us a try? We both know they're all the same. Just gonna end up dead in an old barn covered in gasoline. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Just an old car joke. I, I don't, don't see a barn around, around here anymore. anymore. Do you? Do you? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, boys, but I've got to see to some unstarted business with Todd. Besides, Rodney Spitz only worships the sweet, sexy sun god Ra. Jazz. Hello? Hello? Looking for a cult? Preferably the Order of Todd? Hello? Hello? Uh, I'm a lost, naive, dreamy soul stuck in the body of a late 50s draft dodger. You got any cults in there? Anyone call their god Todd? Well, hello. My name 
is David. Welcome to the Order of Tarn. We offer you peace, salvation, and periodic arm standoffs. Plus, we used to have a barn, but it burned down. It was a sad story, really. We thought it was the rapture, but it wasn't. Again. But the barn still burned. It does every time. But enough about us. We've been expecting you, brother. You're lost and weary on life's dirt roads. And are seeking eternal salvation from the life from whence you've come. So come in, friend. You look tired. And we have a place all ready for you. I have a place all ready for you in my dreams. Put a tail on Rodney Spitz. Follow him on Twitter or like him on Facebook. Okay, let's get started with this application process. Go. Full name? Rex Badger, attorney of locks. Age? 55. Height? Three rods. Weight? Four stone. Do you own your own home? I'd be a liar if I said I didn't. And what is your yearly income? There's a lot of zeros. A lot of zeros. Oh, and I think I have a safety deposit box too. Uh, And a time capsule. Yeah, pretty cool, eh? Do you have any medical conditions we should know of? Not a one. Haven't had a cold since I was 10. We're sailing right along here. Just a couple more. How did you hear about our Todd? A friend of a friend who married my brother on a fly fishing trip. They met the previous summer judging uh, uh, an interpretive devil stick tournament upstate. Uh, Foliage country. A couple of real outdoorsmen. Oh, okay. So I'll just get you to initial here. And here, bank account information here, and finally, sign here. Welcome to the Order of Todd. Hold on a second, guys. I just quickly want to tell you a couple things that we're covering on the form. Like first, I know how to juggle. Second, well, I can make a mean stew out of just about anything. Third, my best friend growing up was a scarecrow. And on a similar note, I may have been bitten by a werewolf yesterday. Now, I lost my virginity to a bearded woman in the summer of 19... I've always wanted to ride a sled to work. But I never lived anywhere hilly enough, though. I bought a timeshare last year. Beautiful place. Right by the beach. Turns out it was such a steal because of the big sandworm problem. Especially when I'm asleep. I asked one of them to prom. And then I realized she wasn't a woman at all. She was a Decepticon. Turned into a pickup truck right in front of me. Hand of God, Todd. I I thought she loved me. But but I'll never have the parts she needs. Vroom, vroom, baby. Vroom, vroom, forever. Beep, beep. I played Russian Roulette with a clown last week. I told him, however this plays out, I'm pulling the trigger twice. Tall ships are definitely the king of ships, but I also think that submarines are pretty neat too. I always thought, well, if I was a fish, I'd be a sailfish. I mean, Blue Ivy will be big, but I don't think Willow Smith big. And can someone explain what the hell a hobbit is and where I can get one? It's not a sex thing. Okay, it is. But mostly, it's uh, companionship, you know? On the drive out here, I hit an entire family of sea monkeys with my car. And they thought they were safe in the water? I didn't even slow down. Johnny Lull never catch me. 
It was international waters. Oh, and I have a relaxing addiction to Robaxa set. Wow. I think that's it. I'll let you know if I think of anything else, though. Well, getting to know you has been a very interesting nine hours. Oh, and there's just one more thing. About that medical condition. Fair warning. I haven't actually been to a doctor since I was ten. Everything hurts. All the time. Except my back. Can I trouble you for a glass of water? Okay. March on, wooden puppet soldiers. March on. Everyone here is just so wonderful, Sonya. Boy, am I ever enjoying myself. And I haven't felt part of a close-knit community like this since I worked in the kitchen that summer at a little place called Jonestown. Yeah, made a lot of Kool-Aid. Served a lot of Kool-Aid. But they never let me drink it. Because I was just the kitchen help. I remember that summer vividly because it was the same summer my sister got dragged off by coyotes. <gasps> was she a rat? Oh yeah, super duper. Yeah, they dragged her back just in time for the holidays. She was pretty much feral by then, but we deloused her and re-enrolled her in school. Before we knew it, she had graduated at the top of her class. It was a heartwarming story. Uh, until she got dragged off by equally cunning coyotes during her valedictorian speech. Yeah, they're very sly. We're so happy you're here now, and we hope you stay with us a long, 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 long time. Or until you reach enlightenment, whichever comes first. Do you have many friends? Well, there was a horse I was close to in junior high, but we had a falling out over some filly. So you like horses? We have horses here. What about giraffes? Do you have giraffes? No, but, oh, I can probably find you a picture of a giraffe. A picture? Make sure we have our giraffe. Yeah, yeah, good idea. But once we've ID'd him, I'm gonna need to talk to him. Y you think you can make that happen, sister? No. Good. Then let's get started. Rex, I want to impart that although we may work hard here in our walled compound, we also partake in our fair share of recreation and leisure activities. We like to get a little rambunctious every once in a while and roll some fun with a little game called Todd's Game of Lies. We play six six-sided die into the chalice of mistruth. And we shake it up and dump it on the table. I know this game. Nobody can beat me. I've been playing this all my life. My dad he used to come home stinking like whiskey, alley beaten cardboard, and dice halls. And some nights he'd sleep down at the docks and just roam around the city like a wolf man, feeding on cats and hanging out in front of all night pizzerias. Or sometimes he'd order in Chinese food menu in his hand hair. It was perfect. Yeah, he chummed with a bunch of street toughs, called themselves the Werewolves of Linden. Ah, ooh, Werewolves of Linden. Yeah, that was their catchphrase. Did you say Linden? I'm pretty sure it's London, Rex. Yeah, Linden. Linden, New Jersey. Yeah, it's a place. You know, about 40 miles from Flemington? That's also a place. Yeah, I, I know what dice does to a man. Pizzerias and perms when you're hot. But when the sevens and elevens aren't falling for you. Yeah, things get ugly. And let me tell you, things got ugly when I was a kid. A lot. The more the old man diced, the more he lost. He'd sneak in early morning. I could smell him. Stale cardboard and fresh cigarettes. And on those nights, when he really lost, 
while he climbed the Empire State Building carrying a leggy blonde, while single propeller planes shot at his thick monkey hide. Sometimes I wonder if I knew my father at all. Yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-yee-
To close our solemn, and up until this point, not silly at all, service, Brother Rex has asked to say a few words. The training, it never leaves you, but it never prepares you for this. There were a lot of good men killed in last night's panty raid. Many of you said... It was a bad idea to be bringing so many guns to a panty raid. But we got caught up in the heat of a drunken moment. And like any good cult does, we shot off a whole bunch of guns. Let's toast a frothy tall glass of Clubhouse Kool-Aid. Because you never know. It might be the next one. But it could be this one. So I'm sure that Bill and Ted... Dumpster Dan and Bootsy Collins. Pony Bob there with the gimpy leg. Sue Indian Chief Richard Cornpipe. And Rico. Damn it, Rico. Would agree that we did the right things for the right terrible reasons. Let's face it. We're in a cult. We're all going to die soon anyways. Like our brothers before us. Who took a rebel stand. They were just 18, proud and brave. But the Yankees laid them in their graves. I swear by the blood below my feet, we can't raise Sioux Indian Chief Richard Cornpipe back up when he's in defeat. That night, they drove old Sioux Indian <laughs> Chief Richard Cornpipe down. And all the oh. bells were ringing. And Rico. <laughs> Damn it, Rico. Oh, Boy, this one's going to be hard to explain. Yes? Uh Uh-huh. I see. Well, goodbye. I just received word on our new recruit, the supposed Rex Badger. Wonderful. He detailed a large account with plenty of zeros, and he's completely taken with the collective. I'm afraid it's not good news. There is a zero, but it's him. All this man has to his name is a safety deposit box and a dubious sounding time capsule. We need to get to the bottom of this. We need to get to the bottom of this. Why, yes, we do. 
Where's the giraffe? Uh... I want to talk to him. Don't worry, Rex. We've got the giraffe on his way. Call him. Call him on the phone. Right now. Sure. Give me the phone. Where's my Todd damn kidney, giraffe? You don't do this to family. That's the third kidney you harvested from me. What are we doing? Can someone just knock him out with something? Damn it, this ends tonight. Oh, for Todd's sake, I'll do it. Well, what are we going to do with him? He's useless to us. He does have that safety deposit box. For all spits all the time, visit RodneySpits.com. Rex, we're going to make this easy. You're going to tell me what's in the safety deposit box and where are the keys. And then I'm going to give you your giraffe. You want to know about the box? Nah, 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 you don't want to know what's in that box. Don't look in that box, ever. What's in the box, Rex? Nah, no, I can't. I won't. What's in the box, Rex? Trust me, you don't want to know. Don't look in it! The box, Rex. So, sorry, I zoned out for a second there. What are we talking about? Did you say box? I thought you said time capsule. What's in the box, Rex? What's in the box, Rex? Come on! What is in the box? Oh, Rex! What is in the box? Uh, I know there's a lot of box talk, but don't look in that time capsule. It was a dark period in my life. Your safety deposit box, Rex. I don't care about the time capsule. What's in the safety deposit box, Rex? And then I get the giraffe, right? Uh huh. Rex, hey, Rex. Hey, Andy. How's your face? Andy, we've been through this. Put your voice modulator on, but we've got someone shackled in here. Whoa, whoa, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't mind me, bros. Just need to get the yoga mats. We got Raja Yoga starting out by the new bar in like 10 minutes, dudes. I'll see you both there. Late. Now, where were we? Ah, uh, Terry. Man, I almost forgot. You're on potato salad duty at Cliff's Potluck. Looking forward to it, dude. I'll see you there. Namaste. Namaste, dudes. Oh, no. A potato salad takes all day. Hey, Terry. You're not going to cop out and use Miracle Whip, are you? Do you think this is my first potato salad? So I get the giraffe, right? Yeah, he's uh, in the next room. But these are only eight-foot ceilings. You're lying. He's, uh, kneeling down. Ah, I see. Did he bring the woman? Ah, sure, what do you need? Giraffes. They are majestic creatures, aren't they? Long tusks. Big whiskers. Tons of blubbery fat. Loafing around barking on the beach. Avoiding the crafty Inuit and the mighty orca. Rex, are you sure you're not talking about walrus? I am... The walrus. Coo, coo, kachoo. <sighs> I'm never gonna get that salad made. Terry, pull over here. Now let me tell you something, Rex. Us, you, and your tall damn giraffe. Hey. Me out of here. Well, the joke's on you, bucko. Rex Badger was just a cover. You've been duped by Rodney Spitz P.I. And I just cracked this case wide open. That potato salad? That was store-bought. Uh, now we know he's crazy. It's my uh, mother's recipe. Terry, will you please take that damn thing off?
Thanks for making the trip out to my office. Did you find my brother? Found him? Well, I spent the last four weeks with him. Oh, thank God. Here's your money. Uh, $40, right? Yeah, I, I don't come cheap. But I'm the best. Tell me, how is he? He was shot dead. By who? What happened? Well, it turns out you were right. It, it was a cult. A spectacularly armed, very dangerous cult. They had thingamajigs that I haven't even seen in movies yet. And I think we might have gotten a little too worked up and started a religious crusade against another cult across the road. We killed a lot of good men, but so did they. I will say, though, there was a lot of friendly fire. We did not go easy on one another either. Other than that, there was just a lot of downtime. You know, cards, fragging each other. VHS movie marathons. You know, the kind of stuff you do at summer camp when it's raining on the beach. How did he die? Clear and simple, bullets. It's hard to say who shoots who in those high pressure crusade situations. Six dead, including your brother and me. Left shell shocked and confused. And I need you to level with me. Is this a dream? I think I left my hat one dream level down. Or was it East? Pardon me, ma'am. Do you have a dream compass? I want my $40 back. No gravy. It's already spent. Mostly on gravy. You haven't seen the last of me, Rodney Spitz. You'll rue the day you heard the name Samantha Stutterpatch. Man, have I got some waking up to do. I need me a big steaming bowl of reality porridge. Because I don't even know what dream level we're on right now. November? Pistachio? Genovese? Brecker, Watson, I think you should see this. I was in the broom closet looking for a broom, but I found what I think is a time capsule. No brooms, though. Odd. What are you doing here again, Squint? I work in maintenance. I was hired this afternoon. That Maxwell House coffee tin looks 30 years old. How do you know it's a time capsule, dear friend? Well, I've buried a few time capsules myself, Chief. And quite a few friends, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I'm off to buy a broom. And maybe a mop. Sally forth, good lad. Well, Bricker, should we open it? Oh, Watson. I opened it while he was talking. Well, it's our God-given right as free men to look inside, then. Right. Let's see here. We've got a series of photographs depicting a teenage Rodney Spitz with three half-nude scarecrows in a hayloft. Should have known it'd be Rodney's time capsule. I think those pictures might be illegal. But hot, right? So long as that was late harvest, hey? Good gracious, a Chia Pet and a Tamogotchi! Oh god, are they alive? Sadly, no. Both deceased. Probably starvation. The pet rock, however, appears to be in fine health indeed. Whoa, what the heck is that? Well, it appears to be a frog wearing a miniature top hat and holding a small walking cane. <laughs> King Edward's ghost! This little rascal's alive! Evening, folks! Hello, and my boy, baby. can that little Hello, bastard dance? Hello, what an entertainer! Oh, Rodney. You've just killed the singing and dancing frog. Look, not that this is going to explain anything, but that frog used to be a prince, and that prince used to be a scoundrel. But he sang. And he danced. Oh, how he danced. And that's what got him in trouble in the first place. Thirty years ago, I told him, Michigan J, keep your mouth shut and be a frog. And here I stand today. A man, possibly still dreaming, standing over a dead frog. Anyone want to say a few words? Uh, before I just kind of, kind of throw these frog guts in the dumpster out back? Damn it, Rodney, he was an entertainer. It's not the best eulogy I've given, but it's not the worst. Sue Indian Chief Richard Cornpipe! Oh, and Rico. Damn it, Rico.
Rodney Spitz PI is conceived, written, and performed by Play Us Out Productions. Follow, listen, and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Spreaker. If you like this episode, share it. If you really like this episode, please comment and rate Rodney Spitz in iTunes. <laughs>